Hi everyone, we're going to start in class five. It is a invitation to a music concert. We're going to do file open and we're going to go to your in class five folder and we're going to open three files. Man saxophone, hold on to your control key, sheet music, and violin. Go ahead and open, you will get all three documents. We're going to go to the sheet music and we're going to use this to save the file. We're going to do a file, save as, and we're going to save this in the Photoshop completed folder that has all of our other completed in-class assignments. Be sure to change the format from a bitmap to a PSD. The name of this file is in-class5 underscore your first and your last name. Remember in Canvas you will always submit both the JPEG and the PSD. Okay, so now if you look up here on the tab you have that file saved. Now what we're going to do is we're going to unlock this background by double clicking and we're going to type in sheet music. Go ahead and click OK. Now I'm going to show you how to do have just a framed background color on this sheet music. I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to drag the layer underneath. I'm going to call this green background to match my invitation. With this green background, um, I want you just to see that there's nothing here on this background. I'm just going to grab my paint bucket. I'm going to choose from my color picker a green. Go ahead and click OK and drop the color. So now I have the green background that I labeled. Now I'm going to make visible the sheet music. Notice I can't see the green background, but I'm going to create a frame so that I can. Make sure you're on the sheet music. We're going to grab our marquee tool. And with our marquee tool, just make a very simple frame on the sheet music. If for some reason you don't like the first time you do it, you can just go ahead and do it again and do another selection. It will only let you have one. Then what you do is you go up to select, modify. There's a feature called feather. It would allow it to feather about eight pixels from the marquee that you've chosen. Go ahead and click OK. If we select the inverse, we now have the frame itself. Now on the sheet music, by pressing your delete key, We've now made that frame and that feather show through and the green background can be seen. <clears throat> it's known as feathering. Okay, we're going to go ahead and leave that. Now we're going to drag down Max Man Saxophone. With your Move tool, from your Mag Man Saxophone, just drag it right onto your document. You may need to resize this. We no longer need the Man Saxophone so that you don't lose your feathered background. Just click on Show Transform Controls and carefully just reduce that to a smaller size so it fits well inside our sheet music. Notice how dark this is. I'm going to double click to take on the new properties of the Show Transform Controls. Notice how dark this is and what we really want to do is just um, let the sheet music show through. We're going to label this sheet music, get in the habit of labeling, or saxophone, get in the habit of labeling your project's layers. Now in order to make this happen, one of the first things you need to do and understand with um, a mask is, in this instance, with this mask, we want the gradient tool, we're going to use it from black to white. Therefore, we need the foreground to be black and the background to be white. Also, we're going to use the gradient tool. You share that with the paint bucket tool. So change that to a gradient. Now when you click inside this gradient, the one preset that we want to use is this very first preset. So make sure you select that and click OK. And if you look carefully here, make sure your opacity, for some reason, mine's not all the way to 100% you should see which matches this black to white. This is black to white. Make sure you also have a linear 
um, format for the transparent. That's the one that works well with this. Then what you do is you go over here to your layer palette, click on mask. You've now added a mask and with this mask, with the colors that I've chosen, you just are going to click and from this end to this end, just a left click and drag, you may get this and what happened, I can see what happened here, is my color is white to black. It shifted. So if I would have had it like this, now it should work perfectly. So if that happens to you, just redo it, make sure that black's sitting on top. So what happens with the mask is it strips away the dark green on this end and then lightens it on the other. Such a neat feature. We're going to do that one more time with the violin. I'm going to grab the violin, drag it down to your object, grab your move tool, pick up the violin, and move it onto your document. We're done with the violin. Once again, this is a big image, and I want to, you can fit whatever part of the violin you'd like on the page. So I'm going to show transform controls, which you can see in your move. Hold on to your shift key and just redraw this violin till you feel like it's going to fit nicely in our invitation that we're creating. Something like that. And you're just learning, so I'm not looking for perfection, just have fun with it. Once I get that the way that I want, double click to take on the new size and then you can turn off your show controls. We're going to go over to this layer, we're going to call it violin. And with your violin, we're going to do that same thing. We're going to check to make sure that we have black to white when we're on our gradient tool and that our gradient is black to white. We're going to add a mask. We now have our mask here and our foreground is correct and our preset um, gradient is correct and we're on linear. So this time you're going to get the crossbar so go right to the edge, that's how you eliminate that strong edge and go to the next edge of the violin and let go and all of a sudden you have a blended piece on this location using a mask. The next thing I'm going to have you do is on the um, <clears throat> sheet music I'm just going to ask you to add a layer style with a drop shadow Look how attractive that looks now that you've got that border all the way around it. Then we're going to go back up to the violin layer and we're going to create a layer. We're going to call this white box. We're going to create a rectangled white box. So we're going to grab our box and we're going to just create a box right in the center. Not looking really for perfection, just a, a fairly big box. We're going to change our gradient tool to the paint bucket tool reverse so that white is sitting on top and then we're going to drop white right on top. I'm going to get rid of my selection. I'm going to add a drop shadow so that that pops out. Under layer. Oh, layer style. Drop shadow. With this selected I'm now going to go to the opacity window, take the slider and just make this about 60% it starts to get see-through and look attractive and blend in better. You're always trying to blend things together when you're creating things. Then our next step is to um, grab a text box um, and we're going to just make a box right here. And then we're going to just put in text for the invitation. I'm going to drop this down to 18 point and just choose a very simple sans serif font. It looks the most attractive when creating um, this invitation, something just straight up and down. I'm going to type in, make sure your font is black or a deep color. I'm just going to match it to his shirt.
and you can see that my um, if, if ever you have this big extra return you can actually go into your character window which is lying right here and if it's not you just go to window and add character I'm going to tell it to reset its character window so everything goes back to its default so that when I press returns in here it is all correct so let me highlight that and then tell it to reset oh, I thought I did Reset. Having a hard time here. Or maybe I have reset it. Does it look reset? There we go. Reset. So everything's gone back to its original. So now when I press enter, now I'm going to put date, time, and somehow struggling with this. This should be on auto sure why it's not letting me do this. 18 point. There we go. So if I, I might have to just go in here and just shrink this up a little bit. Having some struggles here. Okay, and I'm going to change this to auto. Just to, you probably don't have to do this. Something's on my computer making me do that. And then place. You can choose all caps or lowercase. Probably looks better with just lowercase, easier to read. And then at the end, we're going to just put refreshments. Light refreshments will be served. And then I wanted to show you how simple it is to just select the portion to make it as large so you have this, these varying um, types of fonts. Maybe that's just a little bit too big make it so it fits all on one line. I think that would look better to be able to do that. And I could actually go in here and put in, depending on my font, I can put in my own size. So there's 22 point which fits nicely in there. Then I can change these to be something like 14 or maybe 16. So these varied font sizes um, give it this new look that um, you want to use. And then maybe light refreshments is um, even smaller than that. Then you select it all and use your um, ability to do letting so it's very simple to read. So then it would look like this. something like that. And then one of my favorite tricks is to actually do this is to duplicate the layer once you get it exactly the way that you want and just have a copy of it. Go down to the layer and between this they're both black they're exactly the same and the only thing I'm going to do is double click on this T and I'm actually going to change the color of the font's color to green. You can't see it but with your move tool if you just use your up arrow you can nudge this new color of green. Now you don't want it to look like we can't read it and it becomes unreadable. But there's something kind of neat about a little bit of green coming through that text. A lot of um, students also like to select both layers and with your move tool you can actually um, hold onto the white box with the control key, grab your move tool and 
you can move this wherever you want. And then if you link them together, or group these together, or merge them together, I'm just going to group the layers together. Now that they're grouped together, I can actually grab my Show Transform controls, and I can shift all three of them, so that kind of gives it a new look. Everyone, you just completed in Class 5 your first name, your last name. I'm going to go ahead and save that again, and then I'm going to do a file save as. Be sure and change the format to a JPEG. Click Save. Go ahead and click OK, and you're ready to upload that to Canvas. You can change the contents to anything you want. Um, you could add another um, picture of an instrument if you would like. Just gives you the opportunity to learn how to use the mask tool in blending images together.